All right, everyone. Welcome to Marketing on Social Media 101. I am Tanisha Burke. I am a three-star director with Planet Marketing. And this training video is really going to help um, provide a foundation for those of you that are just starting your Planet Marketing business. Maybe you're that person who has been on Facebook just to keep in touch with family and friends, right? And now you have this business and you're like, I don't know what to do, right? Or maybe you're this person, you've just been on Facebook for entertainment and all you do is kind of troll through everybody else's stuff, but you never comment or anything like that. And now you're wondering, what do I need to do to leverage social media to build this business? Because we are in some different times right now, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic. People are staying home. They're not going out to network in groups and things like this. So you have got to start utilizing and leveraging social media to build your business. So in this training, we are going to go over the very basics of what you need to do to get started. Now, there's a lot of information um, to really build on social media, but I'm just going to go over the very, very basics to help that brand new person now convert their personal Facebook page into something that's going to generate income for them. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, I am going to do Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions at all, go ahead and write them down. And at the end, we will do a Q&A. All right, so let's get started. Number one, the very first thing you need to do is clean up your personal page. What does that mean? You need to delete any posts or videos with offensive images or foul language, right? We are doing business. You are now gonna be branding yourself as a professional and nothing turns a person off more than seeing something offensive or watching a video that has a bunch of foul language or reading a meme that has foul language. So I want you to go through your personal page look and see if somebody maybe have tagged tagged you in something that was offensive but that's another thing a lot of people have their privacy setting where other people can tag them and some people don't even know what's on their page because people have been tagging them in some really bad stuff so scroll through your page and anything that you see that is offensive or could be mistaken as offensive go ahead and delete that post you also want to delete any posts or videos that may be considered politically controversial. I know we are in the middle of, you know, of an election year. Um, and so tempers are flaring. There's people on this side, people on that side. I understand you have some strong beliefs, but there is no place for that in business, right? You don't want, if someone from the opposing party uh, is a strong network marketer, you don't want them to not be on your team because of who they, you know, their political affiliation is with. That It doesn't matter, right? The only color that matters when it comes to network marketing is green. So that's what you want to focus on. So scroll through your page. I know we all have some posts that have to do it, you know, this side or that side. Delete them. Just stay neutral, okay? Delete any posts or videos that may be considered religiously controversial okay um you just in general want to stay away from religion and politics altogether when it comes to business okay because you don't want to offend anyone delete any posts or videos that are negative meaning i know some of you want to share everything that you do and how you're feeling right you may wake up tomorrow and you don't feel good and the first thing you want to do is post on facebook how you're staying in bed all day because you don't feel good guess what nobody cares <laughs> i'm sorry i don't want to hurt your feelings but nobody cares people have their own issues and the last thing they want to do is read that you're not feeling good so you only want to post positive things on your personal page if you're not feeling good don't post it you had a fight with your bae guess what? Don't be sending no subliminal posts to your bae, you know, showing that you upset and you had a fight and the whole world knows. Nobody cares. Don't do that. It is a turnoff when it comes to business. Delete any posts or videos that do not reflect you in a positive image. 
I know back in the day, you probably went out to the club with your girls or with your boys, right? And you're doing shots and stuff and you're looking all sloppy drunk and they're taking selfies. Don't post those, <laughs> okay? Stay away from anything that is not going to reflect you in a positive image. And not just reflect you, but how about reflecting planet marketing? Anything that you do inside the business, outside of the business is a reflection of planet marketing. So make sure that you are representing the planet and yourself in a positive image. If there's some pictures of you in some racy clothing showing a little too much, don't do that, okay? Make sure the content on your page would be attractive to the type of person you want to attract. Next adjust your privacy settings. Uh, if you're taking notes, you might wanna take a picture of this. I shared on this slide some of the privacy settings that you absolutely wanna make sure they're set up this way. There are a ton of privacy settings in Facebook specifically. So these are just some of the privacy settings, um, how you should have them set up. So number one, who can see your future posts? You want to make that public, right? You want to be able to have friends of friends of friends, everybody to see your posts. Because again, you're not gonna be posting anything on there that you don't want someone to see. Who can see your friend requests? Who can send you friend requests? Everyone. Again, you might have a friend of a friend who saw something that you posted and now they wanna send you a friend request. They wanna follow you. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to someone's page and I, I love what, they're, what they have on their page. They seem like a really, really good prospect. And there's not even an option to send them a friend request. And they have a business. And I'm thinking to myself, how are you building your business? And I can't even send you a friend request to even start following you. So go on and check and make sure that where it says who can send you a friend request that it is set to everyone. Next, who can see your friend request on your profile? You wanna have that set to only me. You do not want other people to see who you are friends with because if they're like me, they're going to your friends list and they will friend all of your people. There's been times when I've prospected someone who I thought would be really good for the business they, you know, maybe they were an attorney or a doctor or something like that. And I was like, ooh, I'm just gonna, they told me no. I go to their friends list and I friend all of their people because I want all of their doctor friends and doctor lawyers and real estate friends um, to now become my prospect. So you want your friends list to be hidden to everybody else except you. So make sure that is set to only me. Who can see the people, pages, and lists that you follow? Again, change that to only me. Nobody needs to know that. Oh, that should have said future. Future posts, make that public, right? You want everybody to see your posts. And stories, make that public as well. Next, increase your friends list. If you did not know, Facebook allows you to have up to 5,000 friends. So how many friends do you have on Facebook, right? Again, if you only joined Facebook back in the day to keep in touch with friends and family, you may have less than 500 friends. And that's fine for keeping in touch with friends and family, but now you're trying to build a business. So you want to grow your friends list and max it out at 5,000, but you wanna max it out with quality people. So as a start, send 10 new friend requests daily to help build up your community of followers. Now you don't just wanna friend anybody, right? Number one, don't friend a whole bunch of people that are already in Planet Marketing. Don't do that, they're already in the business. That's not who you wanna to market to. You're looking for sharp, ambitious professionals. You're looking for people that are in the medical field, right? You're looking for lawyers, doctors, real estate agents, insurance brokers, educators, business owners. You're looking for people that could become potential prospects for you. And remember CHAMPS, right? CHAMPS is the acronym for people that we're type looking for. So the C stands for children. We want people who have children. If you have children, you know that they're expensive, right? So you're always looking for ways to make extra income when you have children. 
H stands for homeowner. Why do we want people who have homes, right? Because they need money, right? If your AC goes out and you're a homeowner, you are the landlord, right? So people who own homes are always open to opportunities or more likely to be open to opportunities to earn extra income. A stands for age over 25. Why? Because we're looking for people that are mature. Do you remember the type of person you were at 21 and 22? right? If it was a Friday night, you were going out to the club. You wouldn't be going to the Planet Marketing business meeting, right? So we're looking for people who are over the age of 25. Married. M stands for married. Why do we love married people? Well, number one, you understand commitment, and we're looking for people who are willing to make a commitment to partner with you in this business. The other reason is you get a two for one, right? If I enrolled a married couple, now I'm going to have access to the wife's network of people as well as the husband's network of people. So we love married couples as prospects for this business. P stands for professional, right? We're looking for people who have a professional job, right? Those are people who understand appointments, who typically are going to have good work ethic. Those are the people that we're looking for. They're always looking to advance in life. And then the S stands for successful, meaning we're looking for people who have influence. If you were to share this business opportunity, opportunity with someone that's homeless, right? They have no influence. Their, their friends are probably homeless too. So when they say, hey, I have this great opportunity that can make you a lot of money, they're going to be like, yeah, you're homeless. You can't help me, right? So you want to find people who have influence. People that you typically would look up to are perfect people for this business opportunity. Now, let's talk about branding yourself. Listen, your personal Facebook page is your reality show. Give me a reason to want to tune in, right? And so when you start friending, you know, those professionals, especially if you don't have anybody in common with them, like a mutual friend, the first thing that person is going to do is say, who is Cindy really?" right? And they're going to go right to Cynthia's page to see who is this person? What is she about? So the question is, what does Cynthia's page share about herself, right? So does it say your personal page should show who you are, what you're about, a little bit about your family, right? Do you have kids or are you married? You know, what special interests do you have? What are your passion? And if you're in a business, what is it? I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to someone's personal page who's in the business and scrolling through their page, it shows nothing that they even have a business. How can you ask someone to join your business when I go to your page and I can't even tell that you have a business? You're posting about anything and everything. I see videos of cats and dogs and you know, you're, you're posting about um, church sermon on Sunday and this sermon and there's nothing about your business and you're wondering why you haven't enrolled anyone because nobody knows you have a business. So you want to have a variety of things. You want your, your personal page to show who you are, what you're about, your family, special interests, passion, and business. Now, this is an exercise for all of you. I hope all of you have a pen and paper because if you don't, I want you to grab it. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to go grab a pen and paper because this is a working exercise right now, okay? The question is, if I asked your best friend to give me five words to describe you, what would those five words be? I'm gonna take 30 seconds. What would those five words be? I see Rose is writing. Good job, Rose. <laughs> I see Desia writing. I see Ruth writing. I love it. I love it. Some of y'all ain't got a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Note takers and money makers. That's all I'm going to say about that. If I asked your best friend to give me five words to describe you, what would those five words be?
Now I want somebody to type in the chat what their five words were. If you already identified your five words, go ahead and put it in the chat for me. All right, I'm gonna go with Tamika Smith. She was the first one. <laughs> Tamika, you just had to put something negative in there, right? <laughs> she said loud, no filter, goal getter, fun and outgoing. All right, so that's good. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. All right, so for those of you who didn't come up with your five, go ahead and make sure you have those five because I really need you to know what that is. Because now I'm going to question number two. Question number two. If I posted on your Facebook personal page asking your Facebook friends to give me five words to describe you, would they come up with the same five words that your best friend gave? If the answer is no, then your followers don't know you and people do business with people that they know and trust. So you cannot be afraid to share on Facebook. Now, do you share everything on Facebook? No. If you don't want people to know certain, certain things, then don't, place, don't post that on Facebook. But again, you're trying to attract people to your business. No one's gonna be quick to give $200 to a profile pic that has really no, no type of content on their page. So you wanna make sure that the content that you post on your Facebook page is a representation of who you are. Because again, when you start sending out those 10 friend requests a day, to strangers that you have no mutual friends with, the first thing they're gonna wanna do is go to your personal page to see who you are about, okay? So that's a little test for you to um, determine, are you sharing enough about yourself? Make sure that those five attributes that your best friend gave are the same five that your best friend, that your Facebook audience would say about you as well. That was good. Memes, oh my goodness. Avoid sharing other people's memes. Now, I used to be very guilty of this. I love Pinterest. How many of you are on Pinterest? I used to love going on Pinterest to find like motivational and inspirational stuff, but that doesn't really help me um, build my brand. You see, a lot of people's memes have their little watermark on it. And you don't want your Facebook audience to go start following those people, finding those people's Instagram page, right? You wanna watermark your own memes. So use your image to create your version of the memes that you like. So what I want all of you to do, I know you all have like 6,000 pictures of yourself in your phone, right? And I want you to find the best picture of yourself. And if you don't have a really good headshot or professional looking picture of yourself this weekend, I want you to get dressed, take a shower, do your hair, put your makeup on. Men, I want you to shave, get, you know, lined up everything and go outside and take some really nice professional pictures of yourself. And just identify maybe, you know, two or three, one or two pictures of you that are amazing. And those are the pictures that you're going to use to create your own memes. Now, you can find content from your memes from like the IMV. You know, sometimes, a lot of times, my husband likes to call them planet-isms. They'll say like that one little catchphrase, and you be like, oh, that's good, right? And you write that down. We'll use that to create a meme. You can also find, um, content from personal development books that you're reading or google pinterest instagram influencers that you follow and you love now what should your meme message be your meme message should speak to all the people who told you no about joining your business or gave you an excuse for why they haven't joined your business. You see, most of the people who don't join the business, it's either because of their mindset or lack of money. Would y'all agree with that? 
right? It's usually their mindset. They have an employee mindset. They don't think they need the business or they just don't have the $200 to get started. So I always use, anytime I create a meme, it is to speak to the people who told me no, who haven't joined my business yet, to kind of drip on them to help them change their mindset. So use your memes to help change their mindset from an employee mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset. So here's an example. This is a picture that I took. I love this picture of me. Hair was looking great. Eyebrows on fleek, right? Loved it. But look at the message. If you don't find a way to create leveraged and residual income, you'll have to work until you die. Mm. That's speaking to some people, right? That's speaking to that person who's like, nah, my job is good. You know, my boss loves me. I'm making good money. I don't need your little network marketing business, right? I'm letting them know you're going to have to work until you die, right? So that's just an example um, of one of the memes that I've done. Here's another one. The fact that you can't get your hands on $200 to start a travel business should be your biggest motivator. Ooh. That's talking to the people who say they don't have the money. <laughs> Ruth said, my new meme. Thank you, Director Burke. Right? This is speaking to the people who say they don't have the money. And I'm letting them know that's a problem. If you're an adult and you've been working for years and you can't get your hands on $200, that should be the reason why you need to find $200 to get, in, to get started in the business. Right? I got another one here. The number one reason you, just, you should start a travel business. When you book travel, you get a receipt. When I book travel, I get a check. Need I say more? Again, speaking to those people who think, I don't need no travel business, right? Again, I'm talking to the people who told me no and gave me an excuse. So that's what you want your memes to kind of do. I, this is how you kind of build your brand and people get to see what you're about. And then of course I watermark it, um, you know, on the side. This is uh, TanishaBurke.com. Guess what? When you type that in, it takes you straight to my planet marketing page, right? So you can, you know, purchase your own domain um, and, you know, have it linked to your planet page, or you might have it linked to, you know, if you're looking to build, you want it linked to your planet marketing page. You know, I don't have it linked to my um, IntelliTravel page because I don't want travel clients. I want business partners. All right. Angel said, great memes. Wanda said, love that. Sharon said, I like that. Keisha said, I like that. And Alexia well, said, she's taking you. all my memes. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you like it. But again, the IMV is a great place to get memes. I love, they're always dropping those nuggets, those little catchphrases. Those are the things that I like to use. Uh, all right, so everyone make sure you're on mute. All right, another thing that you can do, announce new business partners. Announce new business partners every three to four times, about three to four times a week. So you know how in our team groups, you know, somebody will sign a new, if Mr. Moore signs a new business partner, is that not your new business partner too? Yes. Right. Shanta, please make sure you mute yourself. Thank you. I was just trying to figure out what my team like. All right. If someone on your team announced a new business partner today, that is your new business partner as well. Right. And so what you want to do is copy and paste. You don't want to use the share option. You want to copy that photo and then copy the bio and then you want to post it on your personal page. Make it a brand new post from you. Now, you're not saying that you signed the person, but you're saying congratulations to our newest travel business owner, you know, John Smith, in John's words, you know, whatever his bio is. And then you always want to do a call to action at the bottom. And the call to action is, you know, let's say John Smith's bio says that, you know, he's John Smith, he's from... Um, you know, Waldorf, Maryland, single dad of three, 
uh, you know, works construction and he started the travel business because he wanted to be able to leave a legacy for his family and he wants to be able to show his kids the world. And then your call to action on that could be if you would like more information on how you can leave a legacy for your family and how you can travel the world, private message me for more information. So that would be your call to action. So I always like to kind of tweak that call to action uh, to kind of match why the person joined the business. And be picky, please be picky about this. Don't just take anybody's announcement. Make sure that person, um, their picture that they used is you know, a nice professional picture of themselves, a nice picture. Not that, that, that selfie that they took in the bathroom mirror and you can see like the toilet in back of them. Don't use that one, right? Not the one of them sitting in the car with the, you know, the belt strap going across them. Nope, don't use that one either. Look for one that, you know, the, the picture is a really good quality picture um, of them. And with that note, let me just say this. When you sign a new business partner and you're creating the welcome banner for them, make sure that they're sending you a nice, good picture. Don't let them send you some ratchet picture of them. I've seen that. That is so bad. I seen this one picture and I don't know if this girl was in the club and she had some type of jumpsuit and, you know, purple hair or whatever. It was ratchet, y'all. And I was, you know, I reached out to the, to the person who announced that. I'm like, take that down, get a better picture because people are judging you based on the picture. Do you want the rest of Planet Marketing to judge your new business partner as some ratchet chick? Or do you want them to kind of respect her and respect the organization that you're building? So that person may not know better, you know? Maybe they don't even have a good picture of themselves because, you know, that's who they were. They, they, they never done business before. If that's the case, then tell them, say, you know what? Tomorrow, when you get dressed and everything, go ahead and take a nice headshot of yourself and send me that picture because I this is going to be the start of branding you. And I want you to be able to brand yourself in a more professional manner. So have that conversation if you need to, but don't let them, you know, start off on the wrong foot. You know better. And you don't want, you know, your director to be looking like, what type of what type of team they growing? Like what they doing over there? What they selling? <laughs> right? You don't want to do that. So this is going to show your audience that your business is growing with or without them. Listen, this tool that I just gave y'all, this nugget right here is probably the most underutilized tool in my tool chest that people don't do, but it is the most effective because you have several people that you expose to the business, right? How many of you have piqued interest, right? You jumped in someone's inbox, you know, you tried to pique their interest. You could tell they saw it, but they didn't respond. I know what's happened, right? Or how many people have you sent the, the videos to, and then when you called them for the follow-up, they didn't answer? right? Or how many people did you have the three-way call with? They said they were going to join, you call them, and then they're in witness protection now, right? So when you start announcing new business partners, oh, let me tell you, they're looking at you like, man, I needed to, I need to call Muset back, right? Because her team, man, she just, she just announced three people. Three people joined her business. Why are they joining? What am I missing? I'm telling you, Announcing new business partners will help you. It's going to make those people who are on the fence like, man, I know this is a great opportunity, but I'm, I'm a little scared. It's gonna, they're going to get FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. They're not going to be, they don't want to be the only people that are joining a great opportunity that are not joining a great opportunity when everybody else around them is joining the opportunity. So announce new business partners. And if you're working LinkedIn, how many of you are working LinkedIn to do some prospecting? Remember, LinkedIn is full of professionals. So really pay attention to the bio of the people that you're announcing. So if you're gonna be sharing some of those uh, new business partner welcomes on LinkedIn, make sure it's from people who have professional backgrounds, right? So-and-so is a teacher or, you know, already an entrepreneur, right? You want to match the, the new business partner with the audience that you're trying to attract. 
All right. Now, increasing your algorithm. What is your algorithm? So an algorithm is like this thing that Facebook has, Instagram. It's basically the computer is looking at your engagement and based on your engagement with other people, your algorithm is gonna go higher. So if you're one of those trolls and all you do is scroll and look at other people's stuff, you don't comment, you don't like, your algorithm is super low. So that means even if you put out a bomb post that's like all that, nobody's gonna see it. So if you're wondering why, well, Tanisha, I'm posting every day, but nobody's liking it, nobody's commenting, that's because your algorithm is super, super low. You gotta engage. Facebook is looking for engagement. They, they don't like trolls. Don't be a troll, <laughs> right? You want to engage. And the higher your algorithm, the more Facebook will share your content with other people. So if you start like, if you start, how many of you watch YouTube videos, right? The, the content person doing a YouTube video, they always say, if you like the information I'm sharing, go ahead and like and subscribe so that YouTube will share this with other people. It's the same thing with Facebook. They want to see you engaging, you commenting on people's stuff, people are commenting on your stuff. That's what they're looking for. And the more you do that, the more Facebook will share your content with other people because that increases your algorithm. So let's talk about how you can increase your algorithm. Go live. Let me say it again. Go live. How many of you have never ever gone live on your Facebook page? Go ahead and type it in the comments. We're gonna have a coming to Jesus moment right now. <laughs> How many of you have never gone live on your Facebook page? All right, Rochelle, Venus, Dima, Musette. Listen. The fastest way to increase your algorithm is to go live. You must overcome your fear, feel your fear, and do it anyway. You have got to go live. Nobody, well, let me ask you this. Yvonne said me, she has never gone live. So Yvonne, would you join a business from someone who all they have is a profile pic? You never seen their face you don't know what color eyes they have they got a profile pic of a cat would you want to join that person's business just be honest yvonne see yvonne said no well guess what your facebook audience don't want to do it either <laughs> okay nobody wants to join a profile pic in business they don't people do business with people that they know and trust you have got to overcome your fear and go live period Whatever you got to do to overcome that fear, watch a YouTube video on it. As a matter of fact, if you go to my YouTube page, I have a special training video on how to go live and what it should include and all that good stuff. Go live and go live often. You just have to do it, all right? Nobody wants to join the business of a profile pic, <laughs> all right? Um, post videos. Yes, people, we're in the age of videos. So videos that you have on your personal page are going, to, and people watching those videos, that's going to increase your algorithm as well. Just typing stuff, like words with no pictures, very, very low algorithm. Typing words with a picture, eh, it increases your algorithm a little bit more. Words with a video, algorithm goes a little higher. And going live, boom, through the roof, super high algorithm. So plan to go live and go live often. And a great way to start going live, I would say like for your first time to go live, introduce yourself. And your live shouldn't be super long, maybe five to 10 minutes, but go on your, your go live on your personal page and introduce yourself. You know, hi, my name is Alexia Grave. A lot of you have just joined and started following me. Thank you for my Thank you for accepting my friend request or sending me a friend request. Just want to share a little bit about me. I'm from such and such a place, married. I have so many kids. You know, my background is this and I love surfing. I love music. I love food. I love traveling. And I'm looking forward to get to knowing all of you. 
have a great day, right? That's, that's easy, you know, super simple. And you're not going to stutter over your words because you're talking about you. I'm not asking you to speak about something that you don't know anything about, but just to, for people to get to know who you are. Uh, another thing that you can do is maybe find some inspirational word every day. Like I know there are certain calendars out there that has like a good motivational thing, or maybe you go on Pinterest and find some motivational stuff. And maybe you just go live every morning just saying, hey, good morning, everybody. I'm here today for your inspirational quote of the day and just read the quote right? Have an amazing day. And if you plan to have an amazing day, comment, good morning, something like that, trying to get them to engage with you because you're looking for people to say, you know, good morning, good morning, good morning. Now, sometimes if you're not going live, go ahead and take a selfie of yourself and then do a post. A lot of times if you go through my, um, my, my page, you'll see a picture of myself doing my morning walk and I'll say, you know, good morning, sunshines. If you woke up too, too blessed to be stressed, say good morning. And what do I get on the bottom? Good morning, good morning, have a great day. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, All right? And then I go back and I reply, good morning, have a great day, you know, whatever. But I'm always going to respond to everyone's comment because that's engaging. They commented on my thing, I'm gonna reply back, that's going to increase my algorithm. And you'll know when your algorithm is high because you're going to start to get people that reach out to you or you're going to do a three-way call with them and they're going to say, Annie, you just kept showing up on my news feed. I've been watching you, right? When you start hear, hearing people say you, you keep showing up on their news feed or they've been watching you, it's because your algorithm is high, right? And that is what you want. So go live go live often, post videos, and post engaging content that requires your audience to comment. That is the thing, you want them to comment. Don't be a troll. Comment and like other people's posts too. And that's also very important to do before you go live. So tomorrow morning, before you go live, go comment on about 20 people's posts. Just comment, you know, oh, that's a pretty dress. Oh, your kids are so beautiful. Oh, love the color of your shoes. Or, you know, good morning. Hope you have a great day. Oh, great post. Oh, thanks for that tip. Something, just engage on 20 other people's posts. Then you go live. And what that's going to do is that's going to increase your algorithm. All right, so that is the end of the presentation. There is so much more content that I could give you on this subject. But again, this is your basic 101. So I want to open the lines. If anybody has a question, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Tanisha, this is Kesia. How are you? Hi, Kesia. How are you doing? I am fabulous. What's your question? Good, good, good. So my question is about cleaning up your Facebook page, right? <laughs> so how far back do we have to go to clean up? Great question. I would go back about 30 posts. Okay, okay. I would, I would go back at least okay. 30 posts. Just assume someone is going to scroll, you know, four or five times okay. and, you know, go back. You don't need to go back to, you know, 2017 or, you know, anything. Okay, like good, that. good. I was getting worried. I was like, oh my God, I got to clean all these up. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That is an excellent question. Yeah, I'd go back about, you know, 30, 30 or so posts just so if people start scrolling, they don't all of a sudden scroll one time and then they see, you know, something crazy. Great question, great question. Hi, Director Burke. Yes, hey, Alexia, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. So I actually wanna just piggyback off of the, um, clean up the Facebook. And I'm the, I'm the type that will actually like put up a loved one who passed away. I know it's not positive, but does that send off a bad message to others or anything? Uh, yes. 
Okay. Just, just being honest. Um, I can tell you probably back in February, March, when I remember one day I got on Facebook and it seemed like every other post, someone was saying somebody died of COVID and it just did something to my spirit where I had to get off Facebook and I stayed off Facebook. Nobody wants to know about that. They, they okay. don't. And there's so much of that kind of going on right now um, that it's a turnoff and you don't want, you know, you don't want to take somebody who's in a good, happy spirit. You know, they're ready to spend two hundred dollars, and now they're seeing your post that somebody died. Like, it's it's just negative. It's it, it's negative. It doesn't it doesn't make someone feel good. It doesn't put them in a positive, you know, spirit. And it just nobody wants to be attached to somebody who has like a cloud hanging over them. You oh, know what okay. I mean? So okay. yeah, I would. And another one, I, I went on someone's page and all they did was share posts of missing children. So I don't know if maybe their child was missing and, you know, they never found them, but it just seemed like this person was on a crusade of letting everybody know every time there was a missing child. And I was like, eh, nope, not friending this person. I, that. They just had, I just imagine just, they're this person of just negativeness, nothing positive. Missing children, no, but we know there's missing children, but you got to remember, we're trying to build a business. We're trying to attract business-minded people. And if all you have on your content is negative stuff, then that's not going to attract that person that's looking to go, you know, make their first million who wants to build a team. So stay away from negative stuff. I Great. definitely do. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else? I can, I, Who's that? I'm Director Burke. This is Natisha. Hey, Natisha. How are you? I'm finding you. Um, my question is, should um, we have multiple Facebook pages or just one? Great question. Great question. There are some people who have a Facebook page and then they start their business and they say, I'm going to create another business, uh, another page just for my business. I don't recommend that. Number one, it's too much work <laughs> trying to, you know, swap accounts every time you want to post. And the other thing is you want to see when you join Planet Marketing, you're in Planet Marketing, right? but you want to get to the point where planet marketing is in you it should become a part of who you are in your regular life it shouldn't be this thing that you only do from you know seven to ten or this thing you only do on the weekend and so you want your the people who have been following you for years to see that even though you're a mom even though you're a wife even though you work a full-time job, even though you volunteer at the homeless shelter, that you also are a planet marketing rep and you're able to include this business in everything you do. It doesn't stop you from being a mom because you're a business owner now. You can still volunteer at your church and be a business professional. You could still be a nurse working the front lines, you know, during a pandemic and still work on your goals with your planet marketing business. So you want the people who have known you the longest and that are the closest to you, the people that have been following you for years to see that they too can become a business owner and incorporate this business in their life as it is right now. And if you just do a separate business page, you know, just for your business, then all they're gonna see is business, 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 and then that becomes too much, right? And now they're like, uh, I'm not following that page because all she talks about is her damn business, <laughs> right? You don't wanna be <laughs> that person, right? You don't wanna be that person. You want people to see, you know, oh, you know, she's a mom, she posts pictures of her kids, you know, she's a wife, she posts just pictures of her and her husband on date night, you know, she posts a picture of her family going to church on Sunday, she posts a picture of her baking brownies or doing gardening, she posts pictures of her going to her team, you know, her team get together, they're doing training, she posts a picture of her taking a trip to Vegas, she posts pictures that you, you understand what I'm saying? It should be, yeah. you, sh you want to show that planet marketing is in you 
and and just flows with your life and not this thing you do on the side or else you're going to turn off the people who say i don't have enough time does that make sense yes excellent great question Hi, Tanisha. you're welcome hi who's tanisha clarence. hi who's that clarence hall hey, hey clarence how you doing i'm pretty good how are you i'm amazing what's your question okay i'm um i have a um uh, my 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 name on my Facebook page is Clarence Hall, but my my uh, Instagram is Clarence B Trippin. And you know, I I wanted to use that as my as my travel name, but um, so how do you incorporate that? I mean, because you know, after what that the last subject you talked about, it is it seems that Clarence Hall is more of a professional name. Exactly. And, you just right. answered your own question. <laughs> right. Okay. You just, just answered your own question. Yeah. I am, I don't, I don't feel when people have, you know, Tanisha, God is good, Burke, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, I, I, I hate seeing that. Me personally, I hate seeing that because I want to do, you know, when people are doing business, they want to do business with a professional. And I feel like if I'm, for me personally, if I'm trying to attract business partners and I'm going after attorneys and doctors and lawyers and nurses and real estate agents and insurance brokers, they're not going to want to see uh, Tanisha living her best life, Burke. <laughs> it's not going to be attractive to them, right? Now, right. I have a separate you know, business page for my travel side, right? But it's, you know, it's Lux Platinum Travel, but it, it all really depends on what you're going after. If you're trying to attract professionals into your business, people that are serious about making money, then you have to become that person who appears to be serious and about making money and professional. Not that person that's just, you know, ha I, I don't know what the word is, but just, not not professional in my opinion yeah but the, but the thing is i guess I'm, i guess the way i'm looking is that you know a brand like people have these different names for for their brand you know so i mean right but if your brand is if, if you're using terrence b tripping right playing playing on words for travel right yeah you're gonna find travel clients so are you looking for travel clients or are you looking for business partners? Well, I don't have the business. I'm 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 supporting my wife who has the business, but I'm I'm I have the travel I'm the travel part. Okay, but what I'm saying is are you looking for clients to book travel for or are you looking for business partners to grow the team? Both. Clarence B. Trippin is great if you want to find business partner, uh, if you want to find travel clients, because it's a play on words with travel. It's great for that. But for business partners, if you're trying to find business partners to grow a team, then you want to use your first and last name. Okay, thank you. Uh, that, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. I, pre I appreciate you're that. You're welcome. Each, each one is going to attract a different type of person. So you, okay. it really depends on, you know, what you're looking for. Okay. Okay. I, I have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, based on what you just said to Clarence. So um, should the Facebook page be the one that's professional, but you can have um, a travel page on Facebook that can be more like he said, um, it's clients be tripping is that what you're saying or they should both be professional so this is how i do it you can you can create multiple facebook pages to me that's more work <laughs> and i'm always trying to work smarter and not harder i don't want to have to log into my tanisha be tripping facebook account and then do stuff over there and then when i'm ready to prospect now i gotta log into my Tanisha Burke account. That's too much work, in my opinion. My personal page is my planet marketing page, meaning that is the page where I'm always using to prospect. 
Now, I have a separate group called Lux Platinum Travel, right? And so that group is my IntelliTravel group. That is the group that I share everything that has to do with travel, right? So it's basically all, you know, posts about trips and deals and specials and travel trivia and things like oh. that. So your group oh. is going to be the page where you do all the travel stuff, whereas my Facebook oh. personal page, I'm operating as a planet marketing rep. And that's where I'm going to do my recruiting. And my yeah, I knew, I, I saw that today. Karen, can you put yourself on mute, please? Thank you. Oh, okay. I guess that's what I, I meant. Uh, a face, a professional Facebook page. But if you um, have a travel group where you post all things travel, that can be a little more um, lax. Yeah, okay. so let me show you, let me show you, I'm going to do a screen share and show you um, my page. And this is probably going to look all crazy because Facebook just did the, the change on me. Actually, let me do it from my phone because that's going to make it a lot easier to show you. So let me do a share from my phone. Cool. cool. So um, if you don't mind, Tanisha, while you share, I just wanted to say something, if you don't mind. Sure, of course. Because I, cause a lot of times when we have these, these um, platforms and people start to overthink it, and a, a lot of, because when you have to actually put it into words, it sounds like a lot, guys. But, and the people are saying professional page from your bit, from your travel page. And guys, your, your personal page, you are your business. Point blank period is pretty much what we're saying. And you want to show people that one of the things that Tanisha is able to show on her page when she shows her being a mom, she shows she's a friend, is that she can do all of those things and still work her business part time. It's pretty much. So you don't want to, don't overanalyze it. Don't, you know, it, it's you. You should not have a hard time showing who you are. What do you like to do? Are you a family man or a, a family woman? You know, what do you do in your profession outside of travel? Travel is one of the things. So you want to make your personal page your resume. And, and like, one of the things that Marcella Berg talked about is what you, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? And so whatever you put out is what you're going to, what you're going to attract. So like she said to Clarence, understand what you're trying to attract and that's what you'll put out. So even what Tanisha is about to show you, if I could just put it in perspective, I am a book, I am a builder. I have a builder's mindset. And what I mean by that is I, I definitely don't, I'm not focused on getting travel clients, but I still want those individuals who like to travel, if that makes sense, because my mindset is, my intent is to show that traveler how they could be a part of this business. But I, so I use my travel group to, to entice the travelers, right? I talk about travel. I show them pretty pictures and, and places and things of that nature. And once those people identify themselves as enthusiasts, right, because they're engaging, then I go ahead and have that conversation with them about sharing the business. But that's the travel side. Then I might go onto my page and I straight want to find someone who's looking to make income. So I'll talk about, you know, turning your passion into for travel into income or who's looking to make some additional income. So guys, don't, don't overthink it, but just be you. Because I think when people get started and they think I have a business, they automatically go into sharing their business like it's a corporation. You are a small business owner. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to connect with your audience. And then from there, once you have built a brand, you can put your business on automation, if that makes sense. And I, I hope I'm making sense. But go yeah, ahead, that was good. That was really good, Sunia. So everyone, here's my Facebook page. And you'll see that my cover, you know, really right off the bat, lets that brand new friend that sent me a friend request or that I friended know that, hey, she might have some type of business, right? Forget the nine to five, take your office around the world. And then I have a nice headshot of me. Do not have your profile pic be of something other than you. I cannot stand 
oh my goodness, I cannot stand for someone's profile pic to be an image of something that is other than them. And then they call themselves mm -hmm. a business owner and they're trying to build the business. It should be a picture of you, all right? Now, what types of things am I posting? Boom, announced a new business partner. Very first thing. And let me tell you, I always announce a new business partner right before I start to friend new people because those people that I'm friending, the very first thing they're gonna do is go to my page to see who am I. And this is the first thing they're gonna see about me announcing my new business partner. All right, now, this post here had absolutely nothing to do with travel, with my business, right? Because I don't want my page to just be business, 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 business. I wanna also show a little bit about me and who I am. So this was kind of a, kind of a funny post um, about me going out looking for ammo. I just bought a new firearm and I was going out saying about how hard it was to find ammo for my new firearm, right? But I have, I made it fun, right? I didn't make it really serious, right? Because again, there's some people who um, are pro guns, some people are against guns, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's why when I did this post, I did some emojis in it so that to make it a little, um, you know, lighthearted, right? And it's really fun. And I ended my post by saying, you know, trying to buy ammo now is like trying to buy toilet paper in March. Good luck with that, right? <laughs> So it was really fun. You know, I got this really cute picture of me, right? Because you figure, okay, the girl with the, the hat on and then, you know, the little meme that says, I have too much ammo, said no one ever. But look how many, I got 37 people who liked this post. And so this is how you can see who's following you right this is how you can see who's following you and a lot of people were laughing and they loved mm -hmm. it right but then on top of that you know i had all these comments right a lot of people commented and you know the funny thing about Thank the comment the funny thing about the comments is i had someone comment on here that i used to work with she used to be like the vp um, of the depart of one of the departments that at my old job, so very high level executive. Um, I've been following her on Facebook. She's never ever commented on anything that I've posted, but she went out of her way to make a comment on this post. So what did that show me? People are watching. Even when you think they're not watching, they're watching, right? So here's a picture of me, uh, you know, showing my new member of the family me with the business partner, we went out and then boom, another business partner, right? Because I'm a female, the moment there's a, a, a male that joins our business, I always show that because I want to attract more males on my team. So I instantly announced this new business partner. I didn't sign up Sean, somebody on my team signed up Sean. Did I say that I signed up Sean? Nope, I didn't lie. I just said, congratulations to our new travel business owner. Right? My husband tagged me in the post. So again, the men see, oh, she's married. She's about her business. I ain't gonna try to holler at her. <laughs> they still try every now and then, but that happens less and less, right? Um, here's me just sharing a post from way back, you know? Here's me sharing about yellow watermelon. I got a lot of um, I got a lot of comments on this post because a lot of people have never heard. And actually, if you look, I did an engagement. This was an engagement post. So I said, "Who likes yellow watermelon?" And I got so many comments on it because there's a lot of people who never even heard or tried yellow watermelon, right? And so people, there's some people in here that I can now add to my list is people to prospect if I hadn't already prospected them. Again, it's a perfect way for you to pull out those people um, that you didn't know about that you can now prospect. Can I share something that I do a little tip T if that's okay? Absolutely. Uh, Cause I don't, I, I know that you guys are pressed, but I, well, I don't know. I don't really know it actually, but okay. So guys, I want to share something with you guys that I also have been doing. And I tell people, I mean, the main thing that we want to do, I'm, and 
Um, I can't be biased, you know, build, I, I tell people up, up front, I'm a builder. So when I'm speaking right now, I'm speaking from a builder standpoint, I apologize to the bookers, right? But uh, I just want to share something with you. Oh, okay, did it stop. And disclaimer, this is my personal phone, guys. <laughs> Who knows what might pop up? So um, one of the things that I also do, what I like about social media, it is, it, it is a... Um, it's a platform where it's just, for me, it's like a big fishing pot, like a fishing pond, and I can find who I need. You always want to find your target audience. So what Tanisha shared with you, of course, you want to have your personal page looking right, because one of the things that I do, guys, and I've been sharing this with my team, we're in a, a, a global business, right? I'm not a person that goes outside a lot. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I live in Florida. I'm from New York, um, and so I don't have many people that I know here. And I just like my home. Let, let's be honest. So, um, but I love social media. It's been one of the, te the key tools that I have used um, to build my business because I can connect with people all over. So I'm going to just use this, this group as um, an example. This is a Black Business Minnesota group. One of the things that I love, guys, if you look at it, it has 38,000 members in the group. So for those of you on the line who are saying, I don't have friends, I have two people on my friend list, 200, I don't have people to talk to, I just found this, this group has 38,000 people that I can get in front of or be connected to at any given time. My business is in Minnesota, and it's a business group, so I'm assuming that there are people in here who are maybe business-minded, right? As I scroll, I do see that there are people who are asking for certain things, so that just lets me know that people come here to do business to look for business and things of that nature. So guys, I'm gonna just share with you some of the things that I do because I, I definitely keep it super simple. I'm just gonna Google my name in this group so you guys can see. Um, so as a recent, you see these last four posts in the black in the black business. I just put I put posts out there. I'm gonna tell you this. If you don't ask, you will never know. I'm a very straight to the point person and I apologize if you hear the grandbabies in the back. So I want my main goal is to identify those people who A want to travel, B who want to make money, period. So I came into this group and I and that's exactly what I put out there. Now guys, you want to be intentional. I took a picture. Me and the ladies were out traveling. We took a picture. You also want to give people visual, right? People are going on their page right now and saying, you want to be a travel agent? You want to be a travel advisor? Well, let me ask you that question, this question. Did you know what it meant to be a travel agent or a travel advisor before you got into the business? Did you understand the advantages? Did you realize that you were going to get paid? Did you realize that you were going to get benefit, um, you know, uh, be able to travel for insider? You didn't know that, right? Until someone took the time to, to share that information with you. So it's not appealing to say, do you want to be a travel business owner? Do you want to start your tra be a travel agent? Because people don't know what that means. But so in this post, but I, I put out, if I could show you how to turn your passion for travel into profit, would you be interested in learning how? For point blank, period. Then I gave a short, as, as short of a story as I can. A coworker shared the info with me two years, and within two and a half years, I was able to walk away from my job or donate it back to the economy. As a single mom of two, she resigned six months later. Time to pay it for it. Who can I help, right? Some of you may be on the line and say, I don't have that story yet. I don't have the success story of you, Tanisha, um, you know, Gregory Scott. But guys, you have a story. Hey, I'm a realtor. I was looking for a way to, to be able to create that extra income in between closing those homes, um, such and such. I found a lady on social media. My friend shared this with me. Time to pay it for it. Who can I help, guys? So I just want you to know, it does. you don't have to have a success story or you can leverage someone else. But just by asking that simple question, guys, people will identify who's interested in getting that information. And so all of these people are now people who are, who are prospects who are in my funnel, who, Sammy, I don't know if she's on, new business partner in the business, right? From this post, met her through this post. And I have, I have, and this is now why for me, I can't necessarily say that I have a problem finding people to share the information with. Why? Because social media allows me to connect with thousands of people, hundreds of people, whatever, at any given time. And this post, Felicia, new business partner in the business, this post was working for me even after while I was asleep. So I don't know if it'll share. It doesn't tell you there. But I posted these posts at probably like 5, 4 in the morning. But I want you to also pay attention to this. I didn't try to, it worked the first time. 
right? People were interested. I didn't come and try to reinvent the wheel. I posted it again. I got a, I got hits again, right? Same post, nothing different. Came back again. I'm sorry, my grandson's fun. Posted it again, hits again. I have so much hits, guys, that even on this last post, I haven't even been able to get back to everybody because I'm still in communication with other people, right? So I, I want I say this to say, it takes some time to learn your craft because if I go a little further down, these are still posts for me. I tried different posts, nine comments. Some I didn't get any hits from, trying different things. But you have to understand how to con be consistent, guys. Don't just try something and then stop and say it didn't work, oh well. I tried different groups, different things. I went on YouTube, I watched videos about how to do attraction marketing, right? How to promote my business on, online, right? Don't wait for someone to do a training like this. Train yourself even outside of the training, right? I love those late night, midnight session trainings that I have alone. And even myself and Tamika stay up late night talking. But guys, that's how I learned how to utilize social media and, and attract or, or identify those individuals who are looking for what I have to offer. So you can't be afraid to put it out there. So even for the person, what are y'all doing? Tonight? Even for the person who's saying, I don't have a following yet. It's gonna take me time to, to, to uh, build my page. And, and you're using that as an excuse. I wanted to share this with you so that you can see that that's not an excuse. And I'm gonna show you another, uh, just another group really quick. I'm sorry, Tanisha, you know, I, no, I don't wanna say This is great, that. this is great. So many different groups. You can find groups. There's groups of people already in it, y'all. Like, like it's, it's almost, I feel like a fisherman, I pull my boat up to the pond, I throw my, my, my net in, I throw my, and I wait for to catch the fish. And the fish are the people who are identifying, hey, I'm interested in what you have. And I love it, I get right to business. Same thing, I posted this in this group, you know, you have hits from people. So you just have to guys, um, learn the tool that works for you, right? And, um, and utilize it. But even if, it, if you feel like it doesn't work first, continue to, continue to learn your craft, continue to try it. Just be consistent guys, and you'll get what you need. But this is one of the things that I do, I, I wanted to share with you all. And I'm gonna say this, uh, there's someone on the line who's gonna say, oh, it's saturated with other, other um agents right i didn't want to i know that when i did the minnesota group one on cat said hey i see you in there i never posted because i saw that there were other agents in there i said great that's why i posted because there's agents in there who are not posting right i don't worry about anybody else there's agents in there who are posting and your post might not be attractive, my post may be. So guys, don't worry about that. Just like they say, you walk down the bread aisle, there's, there's, there's a bunch of different brands of bread, but people have the, the they, you go and buy the bread that you prefer, that you like, right? You might be somebody's cup of tea, somebody else might not be, right? The other person's cup of tea. Do your business, work your business, don't worry about anyone else. So while people are sitting in that group saying, oh, I'm not gonna post. And I remember Aunt Kat said, I seen you do it the first time and I didn't think that I could do it again. I asked her why, why, why couldn't I post that post again? So guys, get out of your head. Sometimes the simplest activity is what's gonna be able to bring you a big reward, if that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Sinia. And to piggyback off of what she's saying, that particular group that she was in was a business group, right? There are certain groups that you may be in where you can't do a post like that. So make sure um, that you read the rules of that group um, to make sure that that's a group that allows you to do that. There's some other groups where they say, you know, well, only on Fridays are you allowed to post about your business or something like that. But Cynia was in a group that was specifically for people to go back and forth and share their business. So that's important to note too. So thank you yep. so much, Cynia. That is, and, and for the ones, I got a trick for the ones where you can't. So the ones where you can't post, right? The ones where they tell you no soliciting, sometimes, you can tell a story and pique people's interest by sharing and asking a question if that makes sense, right? Um, and so I know that, I think Jody was talking about that, you know, putting something out. I, I went to an event 
planners group. You can't necessarily, I'm not an event planner. You can't necessarily solicit in that group. But I went into the group still and I said, um, wow, I'm meeting so many, I have, I met so many different event planners that are adding travel services um, to their business, you know, taking their business to the next level. You know, is, is, has anyone else found interest in doing that? So now they think that I'm asking the question, right? So that I'm in the group, maybe they only assumed I was an event planner and they think that I'm asking the question just to find out if, if that's the consensus of all of the other event planners. And then a bunch of them were saying, yes, oh my God, I'm interested in doing travel service. And guess what I did? Oh, I privately inboxed them and said, well, oh, awesome. I could share some information with you guys. So there are ways to even get around that where you're not necessarily soliciting your business, but you might put out a simple question. I know Jody said she went into a group and said, um, how many of you guys, um, who had to cancel trips uh, this year and where were you going? And then based off of people who were, close the door. Based off the people who were responding, then from there, it sparked the conversation, right? Now your inbox, oh my God, you were going to Cancun, boop, boop, boop. You talk, okay, what did, um, well, do you travel off the, who usually, when you book your travel, let me ask you a question. When you book your travel, who you, do you book yourself online or do you use an agent? And now you're just creating that conversation and then guess what? As you know where that question is leading to. Now I'm gonna tell them after we have that, we converse, now I'm gonna, at the end, right before I go, I'm gonna let them know, hey, you know what? Well, you know, thank you for sharing with that with me. You know, I'm in the travel industry. Um, and so if you know, if you ever need any assistance, you can definitely come to me. And actually, I, because you love the travel, if you keep your options open, I'd love to share with you how you could get paid on the travel that you're already taking. People are like, oh, okay. So even sparking a conversation in a group and allowing those people to respond, once again, you're identifying people and then you're taking it from their inbox and creating a conversation off of what they said and then caveating into, I got something for you. So there's a way to get around it, guys. Just, just, but you're going to learn your craft. You're going to learn your craft after a while. Exactly. And those are the people that you also want to start friending, right? Because they may not say yes right away and join the business. But if you're now friends with them on social media, then guess what? Now, every time you do a post, that's a way that you're dripping on them right? You're building that report. It's almost a way that you're following up with them without having to follow up with them because now they're watching you. And as long as you keep your Facebook algorithm high, they're going to see the stuff you're doing. They're going to see you traveling. They're going to see you announcing new business partners. They're going to see those memes that you've been showing, right? That helps them change their mindset and think, hmm, maybe I should start a plan B to go with this plan A. Maybe that is a good compliment to the business that I already have, especially if they're already a business owner and their business is hurting, like event planners. Listen, I'd be hitting up event planners left and right right now because they're not making any money during this pandemic hair salon owners barbership barbershop owners they ain't making no money now not like they were right there's teachers there's teachers right now who are like i ain't trying to teach no more i'm trying to get out of that right nurses people in the medical field they front line they don't want to be front line they didn't see this coming i'd be hitting them left and right right now right so those are the types of people that you want a friend so right now what i'm gonna do is there was a lot of questions in the comments so i'm just gonna go through each question grab a couple of questions here and answer them uh, how many times should you go live in a week it's really based on, you know, everybody's schedule is going to be different. Some people are working a business full time. Some people are working a business part time. The more you go live, the higher your algorithm. So it's like, how, how fast do you want to hit your next promotion? There are some people who go live every single day, even if it's just to say good morning. But I would say, you know, go live at least two to three times a week at least two to three times a week. If you're that person that has a super, super busy schedule, you don't get a lot of time to spend on social, mini, social media, at least two to three times a week, go live. Um, so you can get that next promotion. Um, 
Will this training be posted for viewing later? Yes, as soon as we're done, I'm gonna upload it to my YouTube channel. I'm going to then uh, share it in my Team Lux Platinum um, page, and I'll also share it in the Legacy Group on Facebook. Um, so you can get it there. If you're not in I, either on my team or Mr. Gregory Scott's team, you can private message me. Um, and, uh, or you could actually, don't do that. Just go to my YouTube channel and you'll be able to pull it from there. Also, how did you link your website to your planet page? So when you go on a website like GoDaddy and you purchase your domain name, um, there's a, a place for you to go to uh, forward, to forward that link, that website link to your, to whatever URL you want to forward it to. And you just go into there and you just type in your Planet Marketing website link, right? Planetmarketing.com forward slash your username. And now when people click that link, it will go to that page. So, and you can easily just call the 1-800 number for GoDaddy for support and they can walk you through it. You can also YouTube. How do you link your domain name to another website page? I promise you there's a YouTube video that will walk you through how to do it. YouTube and Google are your best friends. Question, how do I switch or shut down my page and only use my Facebook profile page? I don't know what you mean about shutting down your page. Now, there is a difference between when you sign up with Facebook, that's your personal page, right? Well, Facebook also has Facebook pages, which is really for businesses to create a business page. The only time that pages is really gonna be beneficial to you is if you're paying for Facebook ads. If you're gonna do ads on Facebook, you know, pay for advertisement, it needs to be linked to a Facebook business page. That's how people get drawn to your business page by the ads that you run. So if you're not really paying for advertisement on Facebook, uh, I don't really see a great benefit to you having a Facebook page. You're gonna be better off utilizing your personal page and then maybe creating a group for your travel business or something like that. But unless you're paying for ads, paying for advertisements, um, using a Facebook page is not going to really help you. Now, if you've already created a Facebook page, keep it. Keep the page. Every time you post something on your personal page that has to do with your business, then post it on your business page. The only people that are going to see it are the people that are already a part of your business page. And just because you're not paying for Facebook advertisement right now doesn't mean you won't pay for it in the future. You know, I was with a health and wellness network marketing company before I started um, Planet Marketing and my business page was all about my health and wellness. And I had like 8,000 people on that page that were health and wellness. But then once I started Planet Marketing, I then changed the name of the page. You know, some of the things I deleted, I started adding more content relating to business um, and entrepreneurship and got away from the health and wellness. So now, and then years after, then I started paying for advertisement. So it was, it was great because I already had that page. It was already established. I had some content. So you, as a business owner, you can't just think about right now. You got to think about where's your business going to be five years from now? Where's your business going to be 10 years from now? I would have been foolish to delete a business page that had 8,000 people who already knew me and trusted me to start a brand new page. That, that would have been silly. So all I did was just change the name. And now that page is to my benefit. Uh, what is the difference between Facebook groups versus pages? I just answered that. Can you share your, okay, did that. Do you add business partners to your Facebook page? The only people that I personally friend um, on my Facebook personal page are people that I personally sponsor in the business. Outside of that, I tell everybody else who's a business partner to follow me. 
and I will follow you. Because again, Facebook maxes out at 5,000 friends. And if you're a builder like Cynthia and myself, you're maxed out or very close to being maxed out at 5,000. A lot of times we get maxed out at 5,000 and now we gotta go back and delete some people just so we can friend some new people. Right, so we'll we'll delete the people who are not engaging or not active or just don't seem like good prospects. And so you don't want your page. Why would you want your friends list to be full of people who are already in the business? That's no bueno, right? No good. So again, I personally only friend people that I personally sponsor in the business, and then I tell all my business partners just follow me, and then I'll follow you. This way you can see. And again, my Facebook page is public. There was another question in here. Uh, someone had asked. I don't know if I'm going to find it, but they basically said when I do a post, you know, should I make it for just my friends to see it, or should I make it public? Your Facebook personal page should be public so that everything you post is always public. You are running a business. You're trying to build a business. Nothing should be private. It should always be public. So if you have your page, your personal page set up as a public page, then every time you post, everything is always going to be public. Okay, let me see. Katrina said, I post in groups and have success with it too, even in the same group as Director Riley. Yep, because you never know. And remember, people are joining you. Yes, they're joining Planet Marketing, but they're going to pick, you know, Cynia over somebody else because, you know, they're vibing with Cynia. They like her energy. They like her swag. You know what I'm saying? Versus someone who might be a little timid and they do a little post that doesn't have like a strong posture that's that speaks to them and it might be about travel too but they might like Cynthia because they're like oh she just went in and yeah I want to be with her right so like she said don't be afraid to post in other people's um, groups even though there may be other planet marketing reps that are in there as well Daryl said make sure you're not in a spammy group yep that's true just you know really pay attention and make sure there's some good engagement in that group uh let's see any other questions what is the best app to make memes where you can use a picture of yourself and then write something on it oh my gosh there are so many apps uh i'll share my screen and and show a few that i use shout out to all my iphone users <laughs> Tanisha, i have a question please about um Facebook. Yes. So it's really more or less just related to which sharing. Mm -hmm. So your friend has a business or your cousin and they have things. I see that on Facebook a whole lot. And I can recall a conversation um, on one of the calls and it was kind of said to more or less just share your love and support with them when you see them or in their inbox. Hey, I see you doing your thing, but don't really, you know, share that this is going to be here. This person's having a pop up. This person, you know, is um, selling plates. This person is doing jewelry. What should we do in that regard? Well, uh, let me say this. Walmart is not promoting Target, and Target is not promoting Walmart. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, I'm not. I'm not sharing somebody else's business stuff on my. Page. That's not business. We, you gotta always. We're here to do business. We're here to make money. Good luck, cousin. Cousin Michael, with your with your business, you know. Hope you do great. I might even order something from Michael, but. You ain't gonna know it from my Facebook page that I ordered something from Michael's business. I'm, I'm not gonna put that out there. You know, one of my business partners, um, her daughter, who's in the business, also sells Color Street, right? And, you know, I wanted to support her. So, yeah, I bought some Color Street, but I'm not gonna post all over my Facebook page, hey, I just purchased some Color Street from someone. I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm promoting my business, period. That's all I wanna do. I'm not going to put it out there that I'm supporting anybody's business because it's business. It's not personal. All right. Um, so apps that I use. Fonto is the app that I always use to make welcome banners. Right. So and it's super, super easy to make the welcome banner because all I got to do is select the template. 
and then add the picture, right? And then add the text for the name. So I like Fonto, it's super, super easy um, to use and, you know, change the fonts and the colors and, you know, all that good stuff. So that's one of the apps that I use. Um, another app that I use is uh, Photo Grid. You know, this is a good one to add a photo to. And then you can choose with, you know, whatever layout you want and you can add text. So that's another one. Um, layout is another one. You know, you can choose a couple of pictures and then choose what type of layout you want those two pictures to be in. So there's, there's just a ton of them. There's a, there's a ton of them. Um, and Watermark is the one that I use to then add a what You know how people will have, um, you know, their Instagram on there, or I have, you know, TanishaBurke.com or whatever. Watermark is one that you can do that with, and you can fade it to make it so it's not dark, that it's just like really light. And uh, Word Swag is another one uh, that I use, uh, to create, um, like the flyer for this event. I used word swag to do that. And I, re I really like this app a lot, um, because once you, well, I went too fast. It has different on the bottom fonts. And I can change it, I can add the colors to it, I can add pictures. So I really like word swag um, as, well, as well. All right, I'm going back to the comments. Uh, can you go back to your little app thing so I can take a screenshot on my um, iPhone of that? Absolutely. For us iPhone users, thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, Tammy. Shout out to all my Apple users. Love y'all, Team Apple. Um, okay, so if you and your spouse are in the business and you don't have all the same friends, should you tag your spouse in everything that you post? That's a good question. Um, I would say it really depends on how active your spouse is in the business. You know, if your spouse is really not active and trying to help you build and you're trying to attract as many people as possible, then yeah, I would probably do a tag. Um, but if your spouse is actively working the business, just like my husband is, you know, he's a, a one-star director and, you know, he has his team, he's prospecting, he's building, I'm prospecting, I'm building. It, I don't use, I don't tag my husband in my stuff because, you know, he's kind of creating his own brand with his page. I have my own brand with my page. He does an excellent job on his page. I do an excellent job on my page. So a lot of times, the only time we tag each other is if we're like sharing a picture of one another. That's pretty much the only time. So for example, this was my husband's post right? And it's a picture of the both of us, but he tagged me in it, right? And so people get to see that, uh, you know, the two of us. So it's, it's showing up on my page and it's showing up on his page. So that would be the only time that I would do that. But if your husband's, your spouse is doing their own thing with building the business, let them do their thing. Don't start pam spamming their page with your stuff because you don't want them to do that to yours. And, and I'm going to be honest, sometimes my husband will tag me and stuff and I hide it. I'm like, nope, I don't want that on my page. Because <laughs> sometimes he'll see me do a post with a picture and he'll be like, oh, that's good. And then he'll do the same post with the same picture. And I'm like, I don't want it duplicate on my page. Anybody else have any other questions as I scroll through and see if I missed any questions? I have one last one, uh, Miss Tanisha. Yes. Um, as far as like, I know we have um, calendars and organizers that we use, but um, sometimes if I'm on the go, I need like, what's a good app for reminders? I know iPhone has, you know, you can put things in your reminder, but that doesn't always work for me. But something a little bit more organized. Is there a special app, or what do you use per se? Great question. So yes, I have an iPhone. 
and I don't like the reminders thing. It doesn't work for me. I like everything that I do to be in one place. So I only use the calendar on my iPhone. This is the only thing I use. And, and I use this also as um, my tasks list as well. And so for example, for example, uh, I needed to remind myself to pay off my Visa Platinum. So all I did was create uh, you know, an event and I make it an all day event. And instead of making it busy, I make it free. And then it's listed at the top of my calendar as an all day event. It's not blocking up any time, but it's just, it's my reminder that in addition to all this other stuff I have going on, that I need to take care of these two things. So that's what I use um, because I don't want to have to be back and forth with, you know, the reminder app and having pop-ups on my screen all the time. This is the place I'm always going to go to see what does my day look like today. I got the prayer call. I got the IMV exercise. I got an orientation. I got my virtual coffee break. You know, somebody's coming to my house to give me a fence estimate. I got one-on-one -on -one coachings. I got to sign up, you know. So this is what I use. If anybody else has an app that they use, um, that they love, go ahead and post it in the comments. Janelle, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Great question. Anybody else? I have one. Yes. Hi, Angel. Annie. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, um, Annie. Sorry. I, um... I wonder what the best way to clean up my my page. What do you mean the best way to clean it up? I mean, do I dump everybody off or you know befriend everyone? No, you know, no, keep them, no, keep keep all your friends because you don't want to drop your friends list. But one of the ways that I kind of clean up my page along the way, it and actually hold on. Before I, okay, just want to make sure I wasn't missing something else. Um, one of the ways that I kind of go through my page is when I'm on my notifications, I love to use the birthdays. You know how when you're scrolling through your notifications, it shows you whose birthday? Yes. Okay, I'm trying to find mine. Anyway, I will go through the birthdays and I actually look at that person's Facebook page. And if they are not someone that is really active on social media or I go to their, their page and they have posted in forever or they have some ratchet stuff on their page, guess what I give them as a birthday gift? The <laughs> unfriend. Yes. That is what I do. So I use the birthday notification to go through all of those pages. And if, um, if they're not someone that's active or anything, I just delete them. Because it, it would be too much work for me to go through every single person on my page to see, do I want to keep them? Do I want to drop them? So as a way to have a system, I just do it based on the birthday. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. That was a really good question. Really good question. Anybody else? Hi, Tanisha. Hi, who's that? Iris. Hi, Iris. Hi, how are you? Fabulous. Fabulous. Great. Tanisha, can you give us some uh, quick tips on when you're joining groups, like for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, and you're making that very first post? Uh, can you give us some do's and don'ts of what to post, you know, what not to post in that very first post in groups when you're joining groups? Uh, well, it really depends on what group you're joining. You mm -hmm. know, um, a lot of times I kind of like to do just like an introduction, you know, just introducing myself to the group. But it really depends on the type of group that it is. You know, if I'm joining a group, for example, I always suggest people to join groups that, um, to start, again, we're now I'm talking basic 101, right? You're, you're kind of new in the business. Join groups where you have a passion for. 
you know? So if you love cooking, join some cooking groups, right? Just to kind of get you used to kind of posting and engaging, right? If you love to cook and you join a cooking group, you know, you can, uh, you know, join. Hi, everybody. My name is Iris McCoy. I'm new to the group. Thanks for the ad. I love to cook, but my specialty is baking. You know, any other people who love baking in the group? Or what are some things you love to bake? Something like that, just to kind of introduce who you are and what you're about, right? If you love cars, then join some, some groups where, you know, they're car lovers, right? And, you know, hi, I'm Iris McCoy. I love you know, antique cars, that's my favorite. Are there any special, you know, antique, I love to travel to, to find antique cars or are there any antique shows or something like that in your area. Something to get some engagement, but just introducing who you are, what you're about, and thanks for the ad. You know, thanks for um, adding me to the group. And then you wanna just start engaging in the group, you know, liking people's posts, commenting on the posts, and initiating your own posts having to do with the subject matter in that group. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, Tanisha. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a really good question. Really good question. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? All right, y'all, your head's about to explode, everybody. <laughs> was this helpful? Please comment, was this helpful? Oh, Lord, I see people talking about Team Android. Y'all know how I feel about them droids, right? Y'all with your dumb phones. <laughs> uh so uh, real quick, another question here. Shanta said, are we allowed to share new business partners from the page that other team members have brought in to show how our team is growing? Yeah, I mean, you can share from, you know, anyone's page. Me personally, I, I kind of only share from my team Lux Platinum Group, everybody that's in my personal organization. Um, and the only reason I say that is because the, what I'm telling you to do about announcing new business partners on your personal page is not something that maybe, let's say, JP Watkins is telling her people to do. And so I don't want to grab someone from, let's say, you know, Eileen Ross and saying, congratulations. And she looking at me, you know, giving me the side eye, like, Tanisha didn't enroll that person. That's from my team. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I mean, I, there's so many people joining my organization every day i don't need to go out of my organization to announce a new business partner and all of you are either on my team or you're on mr scott's team or you're on alanda moore's team you know directly in that downline there is more than enough people that are joining those three organizations every day where you really shouldn't have to go out of your organization to do it you can you want to go on JP's thing and pull some or Eileen or whatever, you can, but don't be mad or surprised if they reach out and say, hey, I saw you post, you know, because they might not be doing this. A lot, you know, this is something that our team started doing that I started telling people to do because it, it's a great tool, but other teams might not be doing it. So I hope that answered your question, Shanta. Uh, Kesia said, what would you do about the negative comments? So Kesia, can you come off of mute and tell me, give me an example? Because sometimes it's going to be a delete and other times I may engage depending on the conversation. Okay. Um, it was like one post I put in a group. Basically what they were saying was like, oh my God, it's the pyramid scheme. It's MLM. Um, um, everybody doesn't want to, um, work from home and stuff like that. And so what I did, I mean, I just deleted myself from the group because I was like, obviously these are people that I don't want to be affiliated with if they're thinking like this, but that was just like a question I had. Like, what do you do? Do you respond to them or do you just remove yourself like I do? So it depends on the person because sometimes uh you can delete it right and hide the comments so nobody sees it but then that person is so adamant they're gonna go back you know and keep 
etching you on. And so in cases like that, you just kind of want to delete the post, you know, get the information or make a, make a note of the people um, that you that responded that were interested and then go ahead and delete the post because you don't want to create a whole bunch of negativity uh, around your post. Now, yeah. what I did was it was no positive, nothing on the post. So I didn't, you know, I didn't delete it. I just removed myself from the group. So do you think I should go back and delete that post? Absolutely. I would definitely delete the post because you don't want to contaminate yourself from being able to um, initiate another post in there. And honestly, you should look at what it was you posted. You want to share exactly what you posted? Sure, it was saying something. Hold on one second. Let me pull it up. Because this will be good to kind of see what you, and, and also I, I need to know what kind of group was it? Hold on, let's see. Let me see if I can share my screen. Let me see. I know it was about um, working from home, preparing yourself to work from home. I'm going to make you a co-host to see if that will allow you to share your screen. Oh, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the post. Okay. But what type of group was it? It was like a group with moms that had like kids and they were wives. So they were like stay at home wives mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that had kids and they would go in and talk about, you know, their daily living and um, they would talk about their jobs and stuff. So, you know, I thought it was okay for me to post like that. And I posted other things in there and I never had any negative comments, but I guess that one post, they weren't feeling it. So I was just like, oh, okay. No, I don't see it. I guess it deleted it when I, um, remove myself from the group okay so it's it's probably the wording that you used uh -huh. in the group a lot of times when you're you know depending on the group again this the group that Cynia was in was a business group where that's what people did they were looking for businesses they were posting businesses so that group was very conducive to her being able to just go straight and be come out right with it the group gotcha. that you were in, that's not what it was about. It was about moms and, you know, stay at home moms and homeschooling moms and things like that. So you don't want to give too much information. You want just enough information to generate some curiosity so that people will want to know, well, what is it exactly that you're referring to? What are you talking about? Right. Okay. So instead, you should have maybe posted something like, um, ha are there any moms in here uh, I know a lot of stay-at-home moms also have work-from-home businesses. Um, you know, what type of businesses are some of you doing? Or, you know, are any of you right now, what type of businesses are you looking to do, you know, during the pandemic? Something gotcha. like that. This way you can identify who's already, who already has a home business and what type of business it is. And then you're also identifying people that are in the market looking and what type of businesses they're looking for. So now you, you come off as, well, you're a mom in the group and you're trying to see what the general consensus is about what people, how that group feels about home-based businesses, who's doing it, who's not, who's looking, that sort of thing. Okay, thank you so much. I did find the post. It was like, it was just like a picture that says, position yourself to make money from home. And it was like a little picture of a house. And so I was just like, oh, well, let yeah. me keep on moving. <laughs> yeah. If you had used that in the group that Cynthia was in, then that would have been mm -hmm. appropriate. But for a, a mom group, a stay at home mom group, nope, you can't go in like that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great question. But you know, I have another question though. How could the, from that that seems so simple? How did everybody decide that she was doing a multi level marketing or scam? It still seems weird. It it, it because uh, and and I I want to say this in a nice way and not sound offensive to to Kesia because Kesia, how long have you been in the business? Um, thirty days. Yeah, that was a rookie post. <laughs> I mean, I was I was I'm. The way I look at it is I can't break the internet, so either I'm going to go in and do it 
or I'm not. And so I did it and I got the results. And then I was like, you know what? Okay, I can remove myself from this group. So yeah, I wouldn't have removed myself from the group, but a lot of times brand new bit and 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 let me say this, Kesia. Hey, congratulations for not being afraid to go and market your business. You absolutely want to do that. And just because you, you know, you hit a strike that first time, you got to keep going. Now okay. you know what not to do in that type of group. Again, that was not a business group. That was more of a, how do I want to call it? It was more of a, um, you know, a, a, I don't even know what word you, more of a like. Yeah, a, they were looking for a job opportunity. Well, her post was a job opportunity, but it wasn't a job opportunity type group. She was in a stay at home mom group. In that group, they're going to be talking about, you know, how to deal with kids with disabilities and, you know, um, you know, being a stay at home mom where you have a first grader that you're trying to teach and a, and a, and a high school kid you're trying to teach. You know, it's all about mommy duties and those sorts of things. So the moment somebody comes in and says, hey, I got this great stay at home business, they already know it's a network marketer because that's a rookie move that network marketers would make who don't know that that's not the type of group the type of post for this type of group per se. Again, Cinea's group was a business related type group. That was the focus of that group. So she could go straight in and say, hey, I got an opportunity in travel. This is what happened, boom, it worked. But when you're in a group like a mommy group where they're talking about mommy stuff, or you're in a sports group and they're talking about sports and you, you, you can't just come in straight with the whole business. You gotta take the kind of backdoor approach and act like you are part of that group and try to you know, get that general consensus and get some engagement. So it's a great post, it just wasn't a great post for that type of group. So you have to kind of be in that group and see what type of stuff they're posting and you know, kind of take the backdoor approach. Thank so, you so, so much. I, I found I found somebody actually found it and sent it to me. So let one of the things that I also want to put put out there is I see some people went on there and said Intel travel equals MLM. So they were they clicked on something that they clicked on your post and found Intel travel somewhere. Another thing for me, and I don't know if you've touched on it, I don't promote I don't necessarily promote IntelliTravel, brand IntelliTravel's name or Planet Marketing's name anywhere on my page per se. I want people to come. Now, I'm Planet Proud. Don't get me wrong. I'm Planet Proud. But mm -hmm. things like that happen right there. Yep. That if you have IntelliTravel, Planet Marketing, this and the third brand on your page, they were curious. You piqued interest with that. It's apparent because they went and checked you out. But somewhere on your page, some of you go on there and go to your bio and now put work set IntelliTravel. No, you don't. You don't work for IntelliTravel. Why would you put that? Right. IntelliTravel just positions you to be an independent business owner, right? So um that that i would say the more more of the rookie move was the fact that they were able to go onto your page without even having to say hmm you you kind of piqued my interest saw and tell a travel and then automatically did their own little what they call research and said it's mlm because clearly we know and tell travel is not multi -level i was just about to say that and and right. and that kind of would have been my my response to whoever posted that and tell travel is not a multi-level uh, marketing where, where did you get that from because that's not true right. right and you so that's what CD was saying I would have responded because I love to educate somebody I shut people down quick fast and sometimes I'll shut them down and it'll make other people say I want to know I want to know yeah right, because you you have to have a posture about your business you came on here and you telling everybody that IntelliTravel is multi-level marketing and that's not true right right so but absolutely but then also you don't want to go back and forth, especially if you, you're very new, so. Right, right. As a, as a new person, you definitely, uh, where'd my screen go? I hate when that happens. There we go. <laughs> you definitely, because um, I've had some posts where, and I'm like you, Sunia, you know, my posture is really strong. And I remember I went in on somebody in, their, in, in a group. And we was just going back and forth. And I was shutting them down, but, you know, it, it got nasty. And then actually someone who was in Planet Marketing reached out to Mr. Scott and was screenshotting my stuff. And, you know, he called me out and I kind of got my hands back. He's like, you don't want to do that. You, you don't, it got too ugly. I understand what you were trying to do because I was defending my business. But, 
you know, it was on a really sensitive subject where in teletravel lawyers, you know, were involved or what have you. And he's like, don't, don't go there. Don't let it get to that level. So it really depends on, uh, you know, how aggressive the other person is. But yes, if you have an opportunity to educate someone uh, because they misread what you said, but again, you're new in the business, you, you 30 days, you might not be there yet. But as you grow and learn your business and you know it like the back of your hand, it does give you the opportunity to educate someone on a business because what you don't want to do is leave the wrong information out there. And now everybody thinks and teletravel is an MLM when it's not. So you want to politely educate them, right? And, you know, this way the correct information is out there. Does that help you, Kesia? It does. Thank you so much. And what um, Cynthia said that I was going to tell you, one of them said, oh, go look at her page. I, I remember that part. It was like, go look at her page. And I was uh -huh. like, what's wrong with my page? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a little saucy at first. I was like, no, let me go. Because I know my mouth. Let me just go. go. Yep. <laughs> I had the same thing happen to me. The exact same thing happened to me. And if you've been in this business long enough, it's probably happened to you too. And, you know, Cynthia is right. I don't have um, you know, uh, uh, in, in my bio, you know, in teletravel this, and I'm a planet marketing rep and an teletravel business owner. Nope. Nope. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm an entrepreneur, right? Marketing director, blah, 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 blah. And I don't, I don't throw up in teletravel or planet really. And I, you're rare, rarely ever see in teletravel anywhere on my personal page. Unless it's something where, like, there was this one post that IntelliTravel put out about the two people who won the May contest that they had booked $99,000 in travel. The other person had booked $115,000 in travel. That post I did post on my personal page um, because it's we're in the middle of a pandemic, and I wanted everyone to see that, uh, contrary to popular belief, travel is alive and well. And look how much travel our agents are booking in the middle of a pandemic. So that was like one of the rare occasions um, where I did post something about IntelliTravel on my personal page. And, the, you know, the same thing with Planet Marketing. You're not going to see a whole bunch of Planet, Planet, Planet. Yeah, I'll share a welcome banner every now and then. Sometimes I'll use a welcome banner and you won't see the logo of Planet Marketing on it. But you're not going to see a whole bunch of planet marketing, planet marketing. Every once in a while, I might do hashtag planet marketing. But again, it's going to be when there's a huge milestone, right? When Mr. Bradley puts out that 60,000 um, active reps out there, I'm definitely going to, you know, post that and hashtag it. And the reason why you don't want to totally keep it a secret that you're part of planet marketing is because there are many people who have been prospected for the business and they didn't join. It wasn't the right time for them. The person who prospected them never followed up with them. And now that person's ready to join and guess what they're going to, what kind of search are they going to do on planet market on Facebook to find a planet marketing rep? They're going to do hashtag planet or hashtag planet marketing. I've had a few people do the hashtag and that is how they found me. And then they actually joined the business and they told me the person who introduced them to the business, they don't remember who it was and that person never followed up with them. So you still want to connect yourself to planet marketing, um, but you don't want that to be like, just throw up planet marketing all over your page where people are like, oh, here she go with the planet marketing thing. You don't want to do that but you don't want to disconnect yourself from them as well. All right. What other questions you guys have? No other questions? Miss um, Denisha, I have a question. Yes. Okay. Is it safe to post like the opportunity on your, uh, in travel built, you know, your page that you have built up for your travel. So in your travel group? No, like my, my angel dream travel page on Facebook. So Is it's it a business to? page. Yes. 
but it's all about it, travel right it's all about yeah travel and uh you know just like uh, and specials and trips and stuff yeah uh-huh yes and so your question is can you recruit from that page right yes but you can't say anything about planet marketing on that page okay so i should word it like uh if opportunity looking, or yeah like something like you know if you want to turn your passion for travel into a paycheck private message me okay okay That's okay i was just wondering about that i i was kind of new not to put the word you know or the business model of planet marketing in there but how should I, you know, kind of word it on that page? Yeah. So everybody on that page is is about, you know, about travel, you know, and travel right. specials and deals. So maybe you say, you know, if I could show you a way to save money on your next trip, private message me. Or if you ever thought about making money from home or wanted to get involved in the travel industry, private message me. You, you know, you could say any of those things about selling travel agencies or making money in travel or selling, you know, saving on your own personal travel. You know, are you uh -huh. the person in your family that always books travel? Did you know that you can make money from that? Well, you know, you can do all those things. You just can't post the Planet Marketing flyers that have the Planet Marketing logo on them. And you also can't post the word Planet Marketing. Uh -huh. um, but you can absolutely invite people, you know, to an opportunity. You know, we have our, our presentations on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday nights. So you can do a post that's says, right. If you ever thought about making money in the travel industry, um, you know, private message me. I'd like to invite you to a private event to learn more about it. Something okay, because like I always do watch parties with them anyway. Right, but the watch party should not be done on that group. The watch party should only be done on your personal page and not on a travel page or travel group. Because now that's right. Not that's why I do it. I do it on my personal page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Wow, we've been on for two hours and you guys are still hanging in there. We got 68 people still on, so that is good. Anybody else have any questions before I uh, end this? No? All right, so again, I'm going, I wanna thank everyone for hanging in there. I hope you found value in this. Um, pay it forward. As you learn this information, share it with your new business partners. Again, I'm going to upload this to my YouTube page. Um, so, you know, give me about a, you know, 30 minutes or so to upload it. And then I will share it in uh, the Team Lux Platinum group. Um, I'll also share it with, um, in the Legacy group on Facebook. And then those of you that are not on my team or not on Mr. Scott's team, you'll be able to go right to my YouTube page. So thank you everyone and have a great night.